Get out of YouTube. Warbles on a lot here. And even though I'm beginning this video with a view of a swamp wallaby eating bread on my veranda, the title of the video is entirely accurate. Why not buy American? And in this case, the product in question is Air and Space Smithsonian Magazine, a bi-monthly publication which comes into Australia by sea mail. So you're talking six times a year. Shelling out. $18.99 and I have been doing that putting up with it because yeah it gives a bit of a window into the aviation culture of the excited states of Norte Armed Americano and because I'm an aeroplane freak from way back I just sort of like staying in touch, if you know what I mean. But $20, more or less, you know, like $19.99 for 78 or 80 pages plus cover. And that's up against $11.75 for Aeroplane Magazine. Also sea mail, but this one comes from Great Britain, 106 pages to 130 pages. Before proceeding, we have one correction. I somehow managed to miss the 80th page. So there we go, 80 pages for $19 versus anywhere from 100 to 130 pages for less than $12. So Aeroplane Magazine is looking to be a vastly better buy than Air and Space Smithsonian from the excited states. And here's another thing, the sort of advertisements which appear in the American publication, <coughs> they're aimed at self-indulgent yuppies who are going old. Whereas, yeah, there are advertisements in the British magazine, but a high proportion of them are aviation-related advertisements. If you see what I mean... From hardware to pheromones. Yeah, okay, there's some aeroplane models down there. Hydraulic bifold doors. Jewelry. A walk-in bathtub. That's that's a lot of pilots want to know about that, eh? Pheromones, rings, hearing aids. Pilot preferred sea better pills. Hardware, lawn mowers, suspension kits. Rings, hearing aids, Grand Canyon tours, college rings, lawnmowers and lawnmowers. Geriatric telephones. Two issues in a row. Models, holidays in Nova Scotia. Advanced hearing aid technology. Before, you know, a, something about a book telling you how great Apollo 8 was. Wallets. Okay, here's something aviation related. Advertisements for patriotic prints. More hearing aids. We finally get an actual article. Page 70. Page 70. A book review. Let's duplicate that exercise with Aeroplane Monthly, working from the back. Article. 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 Ads. Ads for aviation antiques. Air Britain. Books. 
uh, military clothing, binoculars to look at your aeroplanes with. Article. Ads for an air show. Article. 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 Article, as in it's an information giving you calendar of events. This is page 98, page 122. Same story. Oh, look, we have a products column in a reviews segment. Whereas up here, We've got an article which goes on. You notice there's no ads in the middle of the articles? In Aeroplane Monthly, you, you actually get to read something on one topic undisturbed. All right, that's all just one article. Before, after the full colour headpiece to the article, you get an ad for a magazine about Boeing 747s. We'll go again with the next one. Here we go. We have an ad for itself. We have article, 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 article. You get a lot of information for your money when you buy British, don't you? And then we have an ad for a competing magazine. You know, like they're prepared to do that. Now, what we have here is an ad for uh, a book about Lancasters. Before getting on to a regular feature by an aviation photographer. In the Americana file. Okay. Great, we've got an article. We've got more article. Full page. Colour photo. Birth of the Cobra. This is the front page feature article. The man who put fangs on a helicopter. Yeah. Sikorsky spent half his life trying to develop and invent and perfect helicopterism in order to save lives and rescue people. So, Air and Space Smithsonian has an article lionising the dickhead who put guns on him. We have these annoying business reply, you know, send a subscription letter in marring what would otherwise be a good article. We have another article about the bloke who got sent to jail for crashing his drone and landing it on two people's heads. Here we go. In the middle of another article we have an ad for themselves. Another article. And before that we have advertisements for Go Flight Connect uh, collection. Promotion article. Article. But it's not bad in the middle. Some of it I like. Some of it, well, yeah. This is an article glorifying the patriotic industry of Border Patrol. I think it's said back here. 60% of the Border Patrol pilots who are getting paid to chug up and down along there in their helicopters looking for people, they're all ex-military. So when you come out of military and there's no actual jobs, you can get paid to go up and down burning kerosene there. An article, ads for sunglasses, ads for itself. Good article about Tunisia. Look. Why the hell would anybody who's interested in historical aviation want a frigging Star Trek cuckoo clock? Add for Cloroxane, see better pills, silver coins. Collings Foundation, yeah, they sell joyrides in old aeroplanes. Really nice photograph of a Corsair. Articles for necklaces. Articles for geriatric phones with large screens. Articles for leather jackets. And wristwatches, of course, because Alberto Santos Dumont invented the wristwatch. True. He did. 
he had a dirigible airship full of hydrogen tied to bot a warren girder and to trim the thing in pitch he had to run forwards and backwards along the warren girder so he couldn't look at a clock and put, put in any one particular spot therefore He went into Cartier in France, in Paris, and he took out his pocket watch and he asked to have lugs soldered onto the pocket watch. See, it's, it's quite a nice magazine if it wasn't for the extortionate price and the tiny number of pages. Um, so Cartier put silver lugs on the outside of his silver case pocket watch, and Santos Dumont could then look at the time regardless of where he was on his hairy go plane. Not a hairy go plane. Dirigible, steerable blimp. So he literally personally invented the wristlet watch. Until then, nobody had ever put straps on a watch. There we go, sunglasses. Geriatric telephones. Oh, high tech sneakers. Yep, okay. Collings Foundation again. More jackets. More necklaces. Urgent. Diamond ring recall. Okay, that's aviation related. We can cope with that. Wow, an air and space Smithsonian with no watch advertisements. I don't think I've ever seen one of them before. So the point is that the wristlet watch was not only invented by Alberto Santos Dumont, it was the first ever purpose designed aeronautical flight instrument to tell him how long his motor had been running and therefore by extension, how long it would be before his fuel tank ran empty. Here we go, fly the big bird. Videos on the lightning, or book on the lightning. The advertisements in the British magazine are completely aeronautical related. There is a level of British imperial patriotism, which is kind of what you'd have to expect coming out of what's left of the British Empire. But it's not actually as irritating as the level of hyper-patriotism that you get in the American publication. Uh -huh. Ad for an air show. You don't get the Smithsonian Magazine advertising air shows. You don't get much on British aircraft in the American magazines. But the... Um, the British magazines, they have plenty of stuff on American feats of daring do, as well as concentrating on some of their own best efforts. Basically, for the money you pay, I really think the British magazines are a lot better than the American ones. All the ads have got something to do with aviation. You get more information. You don't get badgered by people trying to sell you bathtubs and prostate remedies and other stuff that's got nothing actually to do with aeroplanes. Here we go, there's an, a binocular shop. Well, $19 for one of them every two months. Eleven seventy-five for one of them every month. Guess what I did on Friday? I shit canned my instruction to the local news agent to save me a copy of Air and Space Smithsonian because I'm just going to stop reading it. I mean, even the pages are literally undersized. It's just not value for money. And I really don't understand why their magazine should be so bad because whereas Aeroplane Monthly or Aeroplane Magazine, which comes out once a month, it's completely free enterprise. Air and Space Smithsonian is the official organ of the Smithsonian Institution's Air and Space Division. It's government sponsored. It has no excuse to be as bad as it is, but anyway, I'm going to stop buying it. Bubbles on a lot to YouTube. Ciao.